All right, I, I, I'm taking time to respond to Monique again. She made another greasy ass video with her daddy. Um, we kind of relitigating some of the stuff she said on Club Shay Shay, where she talked about how she was on the show and somebody, you know, they played a game, Would You Rather? And I guess she felt like they insulted her husband's sexuality, which is interesting because she can always talk shit about everybody else's sexuality. But I guess her husband's sex was like, he's off limit. But a hit dog will bark unless his mouth is full. But she talked about, well, she didn't actually call her lawyer. Who the fuck would be afraid of your lawyer? Your lawyer, you mean the lawyer that did your contract? The law, that lawyer, the lawyer from the firm of Negro, Negro, Negro from Ghetto, got him and gone. That lawyer, who the fuck afraid of him? He couldn't get your name right on a ticket. He gonna get it right on a, on a legal document. It didn't happen because we decided it shouldn't happen. We didn't. You didn't need to because we respect people. We don't have to do things for t for, for clicks. They took it off because you asked me to because I respected you at the time. You also talked about how I um, disrespect you on so many platforms. Uh, but you have yet, you have this impeccable memory where you can tell to the degree well, who did what to you and why and what happened, where you were. But you can't pull up one time on any platform that I said anything about you at all because you know you're lying. You got that piece of paper and that big ass memory, but you can't pull one up. My biggest mistake is saying yes to you. I should have said no when you came on my, you couldn't come on my radio show. I should have said no that I wasn't playing those dates with you. As a matter of fact, I would, almost anybody who says yes to you at some point is, is, is in this milieu with you. Almost anybody. So I, I would suggest anybody out there, you can say yes to drugs, but say no to Monique. <laughs> you talked about how um, you, my children, families are off limits. They weren't when you were running across Vegas. I mean, on the stage in Detroit. They weren't when you talking shit on social media. When you got your ass whipped and your tickets dropped, then they became off limits. But let's do this. Let's decide that you will worked. treat my children like you treat yours, like you don't know them, invisible, like you have no relationship with them, like you're estranged, you're, like you're unfamiliar, like you don't know. Them. You also intimated that I was coward. You know what I'd never do? I would never let my woman take care of me. I would never let my woman get evicted from her apartment. I would never let my woman have to ask another man for money. I'd never do that. Can your old man say the same? He loves you. Of course, he got to say that. You claim him on your taxes. <laughs> He's a dependent. He's sitting there with you right now. Uh-huh and everything. Because it ain't like he does anything else. But you never address the salient point. I said that if you spent as much time writing your Netflix special as you did arguing about getting it, it wouldn't have been trash. It was. I didn't say it. I defy anybody out there. Stop listening to me. Watch it. Read the reviews. I watched. Read the reviews. You begged for something. You made valid points that women are underpaid, that they're not valued. That's absolutely right. So you would think that when you got a chance to do something that you could argue for, you'd be up for the challenge, but you shit the bed because you never are ready for it because all you ever do is complain about what you don't have. You're never ready for the moment because you're always living in the past. I said it. You, if you spend half of your time doing, as opposed to talking about who didn't do for you and what they did for you, you'd be a lot further along. You wouldn't be evicted. You wouldn't be working for your man. You wouldn't be asking other comics for money. So you got all the ingredients. Take that piece of paper that you're running down the list with and that pen that you got and that daddy, sits next to you, that daddy sitting next to you and do what you can't, do, do what you never do. Write a joke. What it do, everyday people, man? It's your boy PJ. Today we back with another lit video. We back in the confessional, and yes, we stay in the lit, big dog, man. Shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day. Shout out to my player partner, Lucky Wills of Deals, man. He keeps it lit, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to his channel and my channel, man. Let us know how you feel about the DL Hughley and Monique beef. Now this thing is getting spicy. They keep replying back to each other. DL Hughley went on to his shop podcast or his uh, radio show to address this situation. Now. Hey, hey, you can't say anybody holding back, okay? When they get you calling out names, you can't be holding back. You got to put it out there. D.L. Hughley is making allegations that uh, Monique got beat on. Monique, you got beat up and changed your tune and your ticket sales went down? But that's what D.L. Hughley was saying when his family went to go see him. So, you know, his family meant business. 
and Monique. She didn't speak about that. Monique, tell us about that whooping you took, okay? Because we ain't heard nothing about that. D.L. Hughley was trying to keep it on the low. But D.L., man, you got to tell us more. Like, where's D.L. family? We want to know what happened. Anyway, let's get into Monique's response. You know, when I watched D.L. say she went after my wife, she went after my daughters, I want to really be clear who I went after so that there's no confusion here. When I was on stage, when I'm on stage and we are performers, we are performing to the audience in front of us. When I was on that stage and I said, it must be hard to perform oral sex. But differently. Okay, on a coward. That had nothing to do with Mrs. Hughley. That insult was directed straight to you, DL. That had nothing to do with your wife. That was straight to you. So it felt like you were trying to pass it off as if I was going after your wife. When it comes to your daughter, to the baby that you did a post about, you did an interview about, I didn't do that interview. I simply reposted what you said. So when you say, Monique, you went after my daughter, that's untrue, DL. I posted what you said. And then when you said on, on your, when you were really going for it with your shades on, and you said, Monique said, I stood by and watched my daughter be raped. DL Hughley, that's your conscience talking to you, brother. I never said that. I never said that. And I want to be a little clear about something else. Never would I try to do anything to harm any of your babies because we got babies too. So never would I try to do anything to harm your children. However, what I was saying to your daughter and to the other daughters out there, I know what it's like for your daddy to know you've been touched and he not protect you because my daddy did the same thing. That, that's what that whole point was. But I was showing why I would call you a coward, brother. I don't think it's brave that you didn't protect your baby. So when I said what I was saying, let me be clear to you, D.L. Hughley, it had nothing to do in reference to your family, and you know that. Now, when you were speaking and you were going off and you said, um, uh, what did you say? She was so offended by the game we play, but you didn't say what the offense was. And that's the part for me that is disheartening, that you continue to try to trick and smoke and mirror our people. If you're going to say it, say it all the way through. When you say family is sacred, you are absolutely right, baby. You're right. But when you say would my husband rather, and you co-sign your team of people doing that, well, isn't my husband sacred? So you got to be careful in your words because the very words you use, DL, they're going to come back and they're coming back to bite you, baby. And what I also said on Club Shay Shay, when I looked in that camera, I said, DL, I love you, brother. And I don't know if you didn't hear that part, but we really do. We love you, brother. And if ever you get courageous enough, to want to have a conversation, we're always open to it because doing that, it shows how our community can get better. When you're wrong, as we have said to you, hey, brother, we apologize on that one. Yeah, incorrect <coughs> on the cease and desist. And I want to add one more thing. When you spoke in reference to your daughter being a reason why Monique stopped speaking about it, what you don't even understand, I would oh, love for you. What a fight. Out of love for you. See, you can have a problem with your brother, but you're not going to take it out on the kids. And we respected the fact that she tried to defend you, but we got three big ass sons. That if we were to think about it in the same way that she thought about it, what would that be? But out of love for you, we're not going to go after your child trying to protect the father that she loves. Oh, but one she could argue, they... based upon what you said about yourself, had you exhibited the same type of love and protection for your other daughter that your other daughter tried to exhibit towards you, there never would have been the commentary that you made about yourself. 
and I liken it to Brother Corey Holcomb, who I don't know. But I got a lot of respect for him because I heard him say something in an interview. He spoke about how Earthquake Sun had came to one of his shows. And the young man was hesitant about introducing himself or reintroducing himself because of the rift between his father and himself. And Brother Corey was like, come on, man. No, 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 no. You come over here and I'm going to give you love. Because that was between your father and I. And it made him reconsider the whole thing and reach back out to an old friend. In my yeah. humble opinion, that's what yeah. real men do. We come from the old school. We not going to have no problem with your children because we love them. And we love you. And we want y'all to win. Not at the expense of the community, though, being demeaned in order to get followers. But... For the, from the standpoint of if we come together, if we come together, we're going to win just by default. So at the end of the day, when you get to talking about how Monique is not love and this and the other, <laughs> that's, that's your perception. But what I'll say is it is due to the love that we have that we're able to love those that say things that are could be construed as hurtful, but we understand that the old saying of hurt people hurt people. Mm. So we don't take what you say personally, brother. And again, it's nothing but love. In addition to the fact, I'm Q Sci-Fi. Mm. Just like you, except I've been in about 29 going on 30 years. I'm not going to argue with you, frat. Ain't nothing but love. So we wanted to extend that to you. And let you know what it is. And again, if you ever want to speak, let's have a real conversation. But people needed to know where the confrontation on stage began. And it was from that day. It was from that day. <laughs> that day Guess what, baby? We'll be good. Now, talking about we're going we gonna to be good. Talking about we're going to be good and talking about taking ownership. Well, there you have it, everyday people, man. Monique uh, gave a response, and I was... T I, I don't know, Monique. I don't know. You just... You're trying to... You're trying to grandma people. You're talking to people. Baby, well, you know, like, come on, man. I don't know if this soft, innocent voice act is really working. Um, a lot of people see through it, as you can see in my comment section. A lot of the people who I reach out to, who we've talked about this uh, situation, they don't approve of it. they like, Monique is full of crap. They don't even know you, Monique. They just know just how you are. Just like, you got that demeanor of a person that, that's like, of always a victim, always right, never in the wrong. It's like, those type of people, man, it, if you... If you see enough people in your life, you're going to understand the different type of people, and this is one of them, okay? This is one I read correctly, okay? Uh, I think they did say D.L. Hughley's daughter whooped on Monique. D.L. Hughley said it wasn't until she got beat up that she stopped talking about her, his daughter. Well, his other daughter is the one that pulled up on him, and that's why they said they have three sons, three big sons. If they would have took the same route that his daughter took, which means beat up D.L. Hughley, then, you know, something's up. I want to hear the real story. They they dodged that, but they spoke about it. But, Monique, you see, you wrote a check, your, your, mouth, your mouth wrote a check, your ass couldn't cash. And, and it cost you dearly, okay? Anyway... We're going to talk about this later on this evening at uh, uh, Tell Us Why You're Mad. You can call in to the live call in Everyday Thing with PJ tonight, uh, uh, probably about midnight, you know what I'm saying, midnight central time, and we're going to get it in, big dog. Have your communion juice ready, because we getting lit. Everyday people, man, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace. <laughs>